This is Prime 9 News at 9. Voted Southern California's best newscast. When Terminator 2 came out, theaters said, bring it on. When Robin Hood premiered, movie houses begged to get the film. But tomorrow, a new movie is set to open, Boys in the Hood. It's about life and gangs in South Central L.A. So why aren't theaters begging for this summer's release? Why are some adding extra security? And why are some closing the curtain before Boys in the Hood even debut? Good evening, everyone. I'm David Jackson. And I'm Larry Carroll. In for Pat Harvey, here's what's happening in prime time. It's been announced tonight that some theaters that will show Boys in the Hood this weekend plan to beef up security. That's to make sure the film does not touch off a rash of gang violence. Ironically, the movie is a mostly peaceful account of a young man growing up in L.A.'s inner city. Stan Wilson joins us now live from a theater in Westwood where the movie was supposed to open tomorrow. Stan. Oh, that's right, uh, Larry and David. The people here at this movie theater told me just a few minutes ago they have pulled the movie indefinitely. And as you can see on the marquee behind me here, it is Thelma and Louise that is playing right now. There is no mention anywhere in any advertising of Boys in the Hood. And as you mentioned, uh, that's sort of ironic because Boys in the Hood is, for the most part, I am told, a relatively peaceful film. But the advertising leading up to Boys in the Hood it stresses the relatively few scenes of gang violence. And that's what has a lot of people worried. So the people here at this theater, well, they're not taking taking any chances. Four months ago, more than a thousand people rioted in Westwood at the premiere of New Jack City. For two and a half hours, they terrorized motorists and looted stores, apparently becoming upset after the theater showing the film oversold the tickets. Nine people were arrested. Nick Ferretti almost killed his partner during a motorcycle chase. New Jack City is the story of an inner-city drug lord. As it played, violence broke out in a half-dozen cities across the country as rival gangs clashed inside and outside the theaters. Three years ago, the movie Colors, another film portraying L.A. street gangs, also attracted rival gang members to its premiere. One teenager was shot to death outside a Stockton movie theater showing the film. Hello. Hello, I'm Louis Crump. You must be Ricky's mother. Boys in the Hood, another film set in the inner city, opens tomorrow. And some theater owners are worried about a possible repeat of the violence. Ironically, critics say it is a powerful, positive anti-gang film that ends with the message, increase the peace. But the early trailers promoting the film placed a heavy emphasis on the portrayal of gang violence. Can we have one night where there ain't no fight, nobody gets shot? Some community groups asked Columbia Pictures to postpone release of the movie. They are troubled by the negative way police are depicted in the film and worried it could heighten tension in some communities. It will definitely attract a gang member to go see this movie. The problem is, uh, if you're well known with the gangs and know about the gangs, you'll know the title of the movie is about a gang song. Now, the words to this song both depict graphic street life and the gang life, as well as encouraging uh, the, the unity of people joining gangs, and it's a more or less cool thing to do. So the name itself, Boys in the Hood, definitely caught my attention. We should point out that uh, most theaters around the country will be showing the film as scheduled tomorrow. They are not anticipating any problems. They say they're not adding any extra security. But this theater here, well, obviously they were a little bit worried, and once again they have pulled the film indefinitely. Reporting live from Westwood, I'm Stan Wilson. Back to you. Thank you very All much, right, Stan. Stan. Thank you. Well, the young man responsible for Boys in the Hood says he just wanted to make a movie about the coming of age in his old neighborhood, which is South Central Los Angeles. And that young man is with us tonight. We stress young, by the way, because he is a prodigy. He's 23 years old. He is writer-director John Singleton. John, thanks for joining us. Hey, uh, thanks, you know. But um, I want to open up by saying I'm, I ain't no prodigy. I'm just, you know... I'm I just went to film school and I got a chance to make a movie. Well, that's you know? unusual in itself. Let, before we go on, <laughs> let me just talk a little bit about the film's campaign for a moment. Let's take another look at the trailer being used for our discussion. Either they don't know, don't show, don't care about what's going on in the hood. South Central LA. Yo, let's do the local thing. It's tough to beat the streets. You're my only son, and I'm not gonna lose you to no bullshit. Baby, don't worry about it. I can take care of stuff. Trey wanted to work his way up. Trey is a grown 
John, have you at all been disturbed by the way the studios have been promoting this film? Not at all. I, I think if, if we would have went out and we would have cut a trailer that said that this, this is a very poetic film, that it, it is a film that makes its mark on American cinema today in the 90s, nobody would have went to go see this movie. But if we, if we show um, the action aspects in the film and um, that, kind of, that type of stuff, it makes everybody want to go see it. You know? And that's not a reflection on the studio. That's a reflection on today's movie-going audience. If they should, just conversely, if they showed all the poetic scenes in Terminator 2, nobody wouldn't have went to go see it, and it wouldn't have made $53 million last week. That could be true. One of the problems, unfortunately, uh, could be that in some places we will have a situation like we just had with Stan Wilson's report in Westwood that the theater just will not show this particular film. How do you feel about that? I think that that's just uh, the, the fear of, of, of exhibitors and uh, the people around the theaters, ex you know, in, in itself, you know. And, um, you know, there's, there's ways to curb that, you know. If, they have problems with the people that are going to see it. They, they didn't have more adequate security. One of, the, one of the criticisms that's been made, I believe it was even by uh, Bill Upton of the L.A. branch of the NAACP, is why is it that a black director's statement so frequently today has to be about gang violence in the inner city? Did, that, well, did you have a reaction film, to that? This film, isn't, this film isn't about gang violence in the inner city. There's only a couple of violent acts in the whole movie. I'm really tired of people coming up and, 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 and like, you know, I go on programs and they say, oh, the gang film, Boys in the Hood. The film is not a gang film. It's, the film is about a, a black man raising his son to be a responsible man in the face of everything around. And it's, it's not a lot of violence in the film. There's only a couple of few violent acts. John, who specifically are you hoping will see this movie, get a message from this movie? Everybody who has an open mind, you know? Is this somewhat autobiographical? Well, you know, I went to, from living with my, my, um, my pops, I mean, my mother, to living with my father when I was uh, 11 years old. And it, it caused a big change in my life. You know, he set me straight. So that was a catalyst for me to make this movie. Assuming this movie uh, is a success and makes money, let's say, um, what are your future plans, John? I mean, are you thinking more movies, different kind of subject matter, or are you going to stick with uh, the kind of things that I'm, I'm uh, this gonna, depicts? I'm only going to make films about what I consider real. You know, I'm going to make contemporary films about real life because everybody seems that like everybody else is scared to do it. You know, it, it seems that if a filmmaker now makes a serious film about serious subjects, they're considered controversial. Right? But yet in the 70s and the late 60s, when, when we had a society that was questioning how society was, you know, they were just normal filmmakers. And, it, and that just, that all it is, is the, the considering a serious filmmaker controversial is a reflection of today's, conser the conservative views of today's society. Well, John, it's, right. a, it's apparent to me and as well to David that you are a filmmaker with quite a future ahead of you. And we wish you a lot of luck. We thank you for being with us today. Thank you. You bet. And we hope for that peace that is mentioned in the title. Absolutely. Tomorrow. Absolutely. Also, a little bit later on, we will see what uh, Siskel and Ebert think of uh, the movie. Their review is coming up a little bit later in the newscast.